Hi, I'm Katie from Whatever Katie Sews, and this is my channel where I take you on my sewing journey, my highs, my lows, my thoughts and my reviews, and hopefully we can learn from each other along the way. So if that's the sort of thing you love to watch, then grab a cuppa and stick around. So I started off May with the Ellie and Mac Be Genuine Top, um, which I'm actually wearing today. Um, and I've made it um, using two fabrics from my stash, um, So, which is a black sweatshirt. Um, I think I bought it from Minerva either at the beginning of the year or um, last year. And then um, a leopard style jersey from um, Colville Fabrics, which is a Facebook um, company. And um, it was left over from some trousers that I made last year. Um, and I love Ellie and Mac patterns and I've made quite a few of them. And they are really straightforward. Um, they're an American company and you download the PDFs from their website. Um, and the good thing about them is that they have a lot of tutorials online for lots of their different patterns. Um, and you can go through them step by step um, on YouTube. Um, and also they have step by step. Um, instructions with their patterns as well and they are really really good with pictures and with words because I know sometimes I need the pictures sometimes I need the words um, so that's really good um, and it was a really straightforward so I didn't make many alterations I shortened it a little bit at the hip um, because I like my tops to be fitted um, and I didn't want it to be too baggy and long um, but other than that um, I pretty much wearing it as it is um, and I just really really love it and you know you love something when you throw it straight on the next day um, and basically don't take it off so um, I um, will put in a picture up here of what it looks like um, full length because you can't really see uh, from my wardrobe here um, so yeah this is a good one and I'll definitely make it again the next thing I made in uh, May was um, some tracksuit bottoms for my daughter um, and I used the Halla Lounge pants um, pattern and it's a pattern I've used lots and lots. Um, so this was the first time I'd ever made it full length with the cuff um, and I made them in a straight um, size 7 to 8 and they do come up quite long but my daughter is quite tall um, so if your um, child is slightly shorter then maybe you'd want to take some of the length off um, and these are actually the trousers um, and the fabric that I used um, again was a Colville fabric um, that I picked up I think that was this year um, and as you can see there there are cuffs at the bottom and what's really nice about these um, and I've had these in the adult version as well um, they actually don't have elastic um, you use a jersey at the top um, and what's nice about it it just is really soft and really comfortable you never get any elastic um, digging in now the pattern does have um, you can put on patch pockets which I didn't do um, for my daughter but I have done that in the past um, and it's just a really versatile pattern it's really good and I originally came across Halla um, because they do a free kids leggings pattern and actually it was the first thing I ever made on an overlocker um, I uh, went over to a friend's house um, and played with her overlocker and made those leggings um, and then I decided I definitely needed an overlocker myself um, and it was a, just a great introduction and the leggings are really straightforward and again they have um, no elastic in them so that it makes them really really soft so um, I can recommend those and I'm sure that that's a pattern I'm going to use um, again and again um, and it comes in short length cropped length full length with and without cuffs and I've pretty much made them all um, in both the adult size and the kids size the next thing I made was the Sinclair pattern Sienna top and it was a pattern that I actually bought um, last year sometime um, and I just hadn't um, made it up yet and what I really liked about it was the ruching at the side and it actually reminded me of um, like maternity vests that I used to have um, and that ruching at the side um, is really flattering and covers um, any lumps and bumps there so I bought it um, and actually when I got the pattern I realized it was really long um, and as I said before I like things to be fitted um, and I don't like things to be long and baggy so I ended up actually taking off eight inches um, which ended up being a good length except accidentally I think it was either the back or the front I'm not sure I took off another two inches off it um, which was a total mistake and I ended up having to um, just be very clever with the ruching um, so it all worked out in the end um, I also managed to put the um, the arm band on the neck 
Um, so it was sort of just a bit of a disaster, but I sort of pulled it back um, and it was only a test. It was a wearable test. Um, so, and I have actually been wearing it, um, but I think next time probably, well, certainly I'd be more careful when I was cutting. Um, I would still take the eight inches off, but I think I might bring the neckline in a bit because the neckline is quite wide. Um, and I know that the jersey that I used is very much a test jersey. It sort of moves all over the place and it stretches. Um, so it might be because of that, but I think probably I do need to bring it in a little bit. Um, so that was definitely one I would make again, um, but just remember not to sew so late in the evening um, and just make silly mistakes. Um, so yeah, that, that was a good one to do. And the next thing after that, um, so it's been a busy month, I actually made the Coco Wawa uh, Coconut PJ Top. Um, and I was inspired by um, Laura at the Specky Seamtrust. I saw um, that she'd uh, made it and I just really liked it. She'd made it as a top and I thought that that was a really good idea. Um, so I actually used some leftover fabric um, from a fabric haul last year that I did um, when I went to the US um, and I actually ordered from um, Fashion Fabric Club. They had a 60% off sale um, and I had this lovely um, fabric that I had used for another top. Um, so I decided to use that um, and I made a size six and it turned out to be absolutely huge and I took five inches off both sides and I'm guessing because it is actually a pyjama pattern it's meant to be loose um, and because I was wearing it as a top I just didn't want it to be so big so I think if I made it next time I would definitely have to make it smaller um, and also I'd have to make it longer it came up very short um, and I ended up having to do a very, very tiny narrow hem at the bottom um, just so it was going to be long enough. Um, and also I did um, a rolled hem at the top on my overlocker in a contrast fabric um, and my husband kept saying it looked a bit clowny so um, I don't think I'd do that next time either um, but I definitely would make it again I really liked it I've worn um, the top multiple times um, and it's just really comfortable um, so yeah that's definitely another winner. With my next make in May I decided that I really needed to join the kilo wrap dress club um, it seemed like last year absolutely everyone on instagram was making the name clothing kilo wrap dress um and i this year wanted to join in so um i'd been inspired by um the beautiful things vlog um and she had done a really good vlog last summer about six different ways to um, wear your kilo wrap dress. Um, and she kept saying, it doesn't matter what your figure is, um, this suits everyone, you should give it a go. So um, I gave it a go and I made the size 14 um, and I used another Colville fabric, a very soft jersey. Um, and I cut off the bottom because I don't really wear maxi length dresses and also they take a huge amount of fabric um, and I wasn't sure if I was going to like it so I didn't want to waste um, so much fabric. Um, and I tapered it in at the bottom, um, which actually in hindsight I'm not sure I needed to do, um, but it worked well. Um, and I just, I really, really like the dress. Um, next time though, I think I'd probably make a neckband and an armband because I just turned it over at the top and on the arms, which is what the pattern says. Um, but it looks a little bit messy, I think. Um, and also I would probably use a thicker material because I think um, the material that I used is quite clingy. Um, so, but other than that, it's um, been great. And I've actually started to cut another one. So um, that is great. And, and hopefully it will be in my June makes video. Um, so after that, the next thing I did um, was actually um, repurpose a pair of old jeans that I had. So I had watched a vlog um, by Ola at the DIY designer and she had taken a pair of jeans and made them into a denim skirt. Um, and I just thought that sounded like a really fun idea. So um, I gave it a go um, and just thought I didn't do the glue version. I did the sewing version. And when I tried it on, I wasn't so sure, but I've ended up wearing it loads. And, and actually, if you wear something loads, it must mean because you really like it. Um, so it's just a really clever way to upcycle jeans. Um, and I can thoroughly recommend uh, that you give it a go. It's a yeah, it's a great way to um, have a new skirt out of a pair of jeans. So um, that's pretty much all that I did um, in May in terms of dressmaking. And I did make a few other bits. So um, I made a new ironing board cover. Uh, so I've just got the tabletop IKEA ironing board um, in my sewing room. And um, it's 
pretty plain fabric um, and I'd seen that Tilly and the Buttons had done a new tutorial on how to cover your ironing board so I actually bought a minky padding um, because it was just all a bit thin anyway and then I used some lovely cotton um, that I got from the knitting and stitching show back in March which feels like a lifetime ago um, before lockdown um, and I made a, a really fun ironing board cover um, and that really brightens up my room so that was fun and um, also using that same fabric, um, I finally made a face mask because I thought that if we're going to start going out um, and going on public transport, I think it's going to be compulsory to wear face masks. So I actually followed um, a tutorial from the fabric patch um, and she talks about a lot about the different fabrics to use um, and what sort of ties to use and, and how you can use ties around your head rather than around your ears, which um, can get sore. So um, I made one of those and I subsequently made um, one for my mum and dad as well, which um, I'm not sure I've got pictures of. And then um, finally, I actually made a needle case. So I joined in the um, Sew a Little Love 2020 um, challenge which is where you um, sew a needle case for someone um, and send it off to them and then someone else has you and sends you back um, a sewing case as well so a bit like Secret Santa but in the middle of the year um, and that was just a really fun thing to do and I got a really beautiful um, needle case uh, sent to me um, and I can thoroughly recommend those sorts of challenges they come um, on Instagram quite a lot um, and they're just really fun and um, it gives you a chance to meet other people in the community so um, I think that's probably everything I've done this month it's been busy um, and hopefully you've enjoyed hearing about um, my blogging um, some of you might already follow me on Instagram but please go over to their um, at, at whatever Katie sews if you're not following me already um, and hopefully if you have been following me, this video will start to bring some of it to life. So um, please like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.